Western conceptions of time have always perceived a unidirectional flow into the distant future with no end. Indigenous conceptions of time explain time as cyclical, meaning there is always a return to the beginning. In this short presentation, we will walk you through the original Mayan calendar system and explain why, for the past 500 years, it has been misinterpreted by Western scholars as being incorrect. First, it is important to understand that all calendar systems were based on the sun's movement across the horizon. A tropical year, also known as a solar year, represents the time taken by the Earth to complete one revolution around the Sun. It is well known among astronomers that this cycle takes almost 365 and a quarter days. In 600 BC, the Olmec civilization was creating the foundations for the Mayan calendar to emerge. They chose August 13th as the first day of the new year for its astronomical significance. Many of the Mayan pyramids are aligned to represent the spring and fall equinoxes and, of course, the new year, August the 13th. The Maya built their pyramids to mark the movement of time organically, based on the precise movements of the sun. For example, on August 13th, the sun is right in the middle of the sky at noon in one of the oldest Mayan areas. On this single day, a perfect square cross alignment is attained in relation to the position of the sun at sunrise, noon, sunset, and midnight. This perfect cross alignment represents the time-space conception, which is the very core of Mesoamerican civilization. This astronomical event is what identifies the first day of the new year for the Maya. The GPE correlation is based on the sun's cycle circuit, an indigenous conception that values and recognizes the sun's journey through a complete day cycle, which includes sunrise, noon, sunset, and midnight days. By honoring the movement of the sun through each of these sun cycles, an entire awareness of the sun's presence is accounted for even at night. Western scholarship only considers the beginning of a full day cycle at midnight and therefore does not have a conception of days starting alternatively at sunrise, noon, or sunset. Western scholarship of Mayan timekeeping does not acknowledge the role of the year bearers, who have been depicted in many epigraphic and iconographic Mesoamerican contexts. For centuries, these year bearers have been overlooked and ignored. Their role has not been fully understood until now. Indigenous timekeepers did not need to implement a leap year in their calendar system because they understood that each year bearer performs the passage of the last quarter day by means of their cardinal shifting, passing on the hop, the year, to the next year bearer. Since colonial contact, Western scholars have declared that the Mayan calendar lagged because it did not include or account for the quarter day at the end of each calendar year. This incorrect assumption was made because Western scholarship of Mesoamerican calendars completely missed the whole point and presence of the four year bearers. For indigenous timekeepers, each of the four year bearers works for an entire year cycle, day by day, or keen by keen. In the east, the Caban year bearer counts sunrise days. In the north, the Ik year bearer reckons the noon days. In the west, Manik year bearer keeps track of sunset days. And in the south, Eb year bearer counts midnight days. One by one, each year bearer performs the task of ritually passing the hop, the year, to the next year bearer, which brings it to life. In the east, the Caban year bearer keeps track of every sunrise for 365 days. Then he ritually passes the hab, the year, to the Ik year bearer in the north. This passing of the hab is performed in ritual time, thereby absorbing the passing of a quarter day in ceremonial time. 
Eek in the north keeps track of every new day beginning at noon for 365 keen, or days, and then moves the hab, the year, to Manik in the west. Manik in the west accounts for each new day from sunset. After 365 sunset keens, or days, Manik moves the year to Ep in the south. Ep year bearer accounts for all the midnight keen, or days. Again, one quarter day of ritual time is included with the passing of the hap, the year. After four years of each year bearer performing its duty in ceremonial time, a full ritual day is completed. A new four year cycle begins again when the Kaban year bearer takes his seat for 365 keen, or days, beginning at sunrise. This four-year cycle continues until a Bakhtun cycle is completed. In Western conceptions of time, days only begin at midnight. But early Mayans and Mesoamerican timekeepers had figured out another system that accounts for days beginning at different times during the Earth's revolution around the sun. The Mayan calendar does not need to include a leap year every four years because it accounts for every last quarter day in ritual time and that helps to push the starting of the day cycle further ahead and therefore corrects its solar alignment upon the fourth year. For Western scholars, the quarter days appeared to be missing precisely because they were ritual time. This is what Western scholarship could never figure out. The inability to comprehend or unwillingness to respect the role of the year bearers has interfered with the measuring system of kin days on the long count used by Olmec and later Mayan astronomers. This misunderstanding has not only distorted the concept of the long count, but has also misrepresented the beginning of creation calculated by the Olmecs and articulated by the Mayans. By freeing the Kin day at the end of every fourth year from being a leap day, the long count that expresses 13 Baktun and which holds 1,872,000 kin, or days, totals more than 5,128 years instead of the conventional 5,125 years. So many kin, days, freed from being a leap day, represent over three years in the 13 Baktun cycle. All this explains why the starting date calculated by Western scholars missed the significant astronomical event of Venus and the Moon. The predominance of Venus and the Moon in the painted Mayan books helped Dr. Geraldine Patrick and Sina uncover that eight kumku of creation days must be related to an important astronomical event in which Venus and the Moon were significantly implicated. The introductory passage on page 51a of the Dresden Codex describes Venus, Lamat, rising out of the water eight days after creation. Koba Stele I tells that on eight kumku, moon was waning crescent, and so it follows that moon rose on the west eight days later. From an astronomical standpoint, it was understood by indigenous timekeepers that once Venus and the Moon returned to their starting point on Creation Day, the 13 Baktun cycle would be completed. The description of Venus and Moon under the water at the starting of 13 Baktun means that they were also under the water at the closing of the cycle. On May 3rd, 2013, the Moon and Venus completed their cycle, marking the actual closing of the long count 13 Baktun cycle. Erroneous calculations proposed by Western scholars marked December 21st, 2012 as the end of the Mayan long count calendar, but they were wrong. The Moon and Venus were aligned again for the very first time since creation. This astronomical event not only reconciles creation time, but more significantly proves that Mesoamerican timekeepers were accurate and precise and truly centuries ahead of their time.